Everywhere you look these days, you see someone on some kind of device, a phone, a tablet, a laptop. I wonder what they're looking at. Chances are it's social media. Now there's many benefits to social media, but research is showing it could be having an impact on people's mental health. In this video, we will explore. Dr. Ted here and welcome back to the channel and today's topic, the impact of social media on mental health. In 2019, social media users is estimated to be at 3.5 billion people, up 9% year on year. Wow. Now social media has a lot of benefits of course, uh, increased communication, you can keep up to date with other people and what they're doing, uh, information. Right now you're watching this video on social media. Thank you for watching. Now, aside from the, the social media universe that people can be absorbed into, I just think myself, the increased usage of these devices can also lead to some problems, physical problems when you think about it. Let's start with social media addiction. Now people are addicted to a variety of substances. For example, alcohol. Could they be addicted to social media? Yes. Humans are social creatures wanting to connect to other people. Social media allows that, especially for those people who are maybe shy, introvert, especially face-to-face -face interactions. In the virtual world, they can be very much more confident, less introverted. It's very powerful. People want recognition. They want to put something out there and then people acknowledge it and that is done through their likes. The likes on their profile, their pictures, makes people feel good, that kind of confidence. Wow, what I'm doing is great, people like it. People want to be in the know of what others are doing. In a sense, they want to have that authority. Oh, I know what so-and-so is doing. Oh yeah, I know what's going on over there. Again, makes them feel good. And this can lead to a very addictive kind of characteristic, kind of that urge, that compulsion to kind of do something, to kind of reach for something, to reach for a substance, reach for social media. So they're always picking up their phone, always looking at it something lights up on the phone or a buzz or something, they gotta go for it. So we can kind of see how social media can be very addictive. Unhelpful comparisons and its impact on our mental health. Looking through all those pictures on social media, wow, right? I mean, look at the life that that person leads. Wow, that's great. Wow, how's my life? You can also start to feel quite jealous that you're not living that life, that you're just kind of maybe an outcast. Looking at all those popular pictures, nice pictures, creates this, you could say this, movement to be better, to kind of show this really good side, to kind of show, it's like a pressure you could say to live up to some standard that you may not ever be able to live up to. Therefore, when you're posting your own pictures, you start to resort to a lot of the Photoshop programs or other kind of programs built into uh, social media that kind of make pictures look better. So that holiday that eh, maybe was so-so, not so glamorous, is now looking really good as it goes through these editors. So you can put that out there and have everybody say, wow, look at your holiday. So in a way, it's kind of wanting you to be better than what you, what it really is, kind of uh, maybe raise your self-esteem so that you can feel good about yourself. So, and then again, this is like a cycle, right? 
So other people looking at it say, wow, I wish I could have that kind of holiday. And then they feel, they don't feel very good. So as we can see, the cycle repeats, repeats, on it goes to kind of keep up because people aren't really happy with themselves, aren't really feeling that they are part of the, the big group that is popular. Studies also find a connection between cyberbullying and uh, social media. Those surveyed who have been uh, cyberbullied, 85% really have found it really has impacted their mental health. Studies show that people cyberbullied are more likely to be depressed, uh, engage in self-harm, uh, even suicide. Some of the things that I've already laid out in this video can maybe help explain some of the research that's coming up uh, on the connection between mental health and social media. So, for example, some of the research indicates that those who consume social media, for example, reading posts, are more likely to be depressed than those who post. Consuming social media extended periods can lead to more episodes of anxiety, stress, depression. A U.S. study done in 2017 can help show this link between social media and mental health. From 2010 to 2015, half a million uh, school-aged kids were surveyed. So from the 8th grade to the 12th grade. And it was found that there was a 33% increase in depression during that time. Females had a 65% increase in suicide rates. Wow. When they looked at people's consumption of social media, those ones who had consumed lots of social media during those years had that more mental health issues versus those who are more less connected to social media, more outside uh, playing basketball or various games, uh, experienced less mental health problems. Females were found to have more addiction to social media than males. Now, as indicated in the start of this video, social media has a lot of benefits, right? Um, again, we are social creatures and social media allows us to connect with other people and that can reduce loneliness. Uh, sending messages can be done you know, across the world very, very quickly versus before uh, getting on a, on a phone and talking to somebody. Uh, wow, now I just hit a few things on my phone and bang, that message is, is sent. Platforms like, like YouTube, right? Powerful. You can share information. Uh, make these videos, for example. Uh, let people see your individuality. So through the videos that you make, you can show yourself and kind of express yourself. You can have that level of creativity. Pretty powerful. Social media allows you to connect with other people who could have uh, mental health challenges through these various uh, support groups and online support groups and uh, various centers where you can find information, websites, pretty powerful stuff. So we have to remember some of the really good things about social media. So in conclusion, the research on social media and mental health is still in its early days. So it's kind of hard to kind of have very clear facts, say, well, watching social media will create uh, more depression in you or because everybody's different, right? And everybody has a number of different circumstances happening in their lives that can be contributing to uh, mental health. So it's just really important if you're consuming a lot of social media, having some reflection on it. What are you consuming? Are you kind of going again and again to a certain website, a certain celebrity profile, friends, or some uh, YouTube influencer that you're looking at their lives and you're saying, wow, wish I was like that person. After you watch the video, you're kind of a little bit maybe down, a little bit maybe depressed and feeling, oh, 
I'll never be like that person. I'll never look like that person. I'll never live that life. So just having that awareness uh, in yourself, if you see other, other people and you're seeing, wow, that, that person is really feeling down and, wow, they're really always attached to the phone. They're really always looking at that device and social media and afterwards they feel, they don't feel the best. So just looking at your consumption of social media and kind of reflecting and yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm too much into this virtual world of things that can be created, uh, photoshopped and enhanced in many ways to present this ideal image to the world. But in reality, it's not really the case. So I wish you the best mental health. And again, just be aware of things around you and the social media in particular. So until the next video, take care. Want more content on mental health? Have a look at this video.